Hey everybody, a couple of weeks ago I had the opportunity to join some awesome people at a darker sky location. And while I was there, I captured what I think is my coolest image yet. And in a moment, I'll tell you why. My name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. If you've seen any of my previous videos, then you probably know that I image from a pretty badly light polluted area. Most of my sky is Bortle 8. Part of it borders on Bortle 7. These are not great skies. So whenever I get a chance to head out to a darker sky location, even if it's a Bortle 5, I jump at the opportunity. So I grabbed my Celestron Nexstar 6SE and I headed out. Now this location is about an hour and change from where I live. And at one point, not too long ago, it was also a Bortle 4. But due to surrounding neighborhood construction, additional light pollution, it's gotten worse. I had last been there in February with my binoculars and a somewhat clear night. So I was hoping for clear skies this evening as well. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to image, but Comet 12 Peepons Brooks was still in the sky, and I was itching for another opportunity to image that. In the end, I settled on the Rosette Nebula and an area just north of Virgo. Last summer, I had captured Markarian's chain from my backyard using my 6 inch Schmidt Cassegrain Celestron Nexstar 6SE in an image that represented more than six hours of data capture. So this night I wanted to try again, only instead of using the Celestron 6SE, I was going to mount my Rokinon lens with the Astro camera, the cooled ASI 294MC Pro, in order to capture a wider field image. Now, I figured that capturing the comet would be a little bit hectic because I'd have to set up in a hurry and uh, get everything aligned. And really, once I'd done my polar alignment and gotten through some basic uh, drift alignment, I didn't have much time left. I ended up with 33 frames of 12 Pons Brooks at 30 seconds of capture. And, unlike last time, I had my UV IR cut filter in place. Between the UV IR cut filter and the better shooting location, I think this image turned out better. Next, I spent an hour and a half capturing the Rosette Nebula which I was hoping would turn out pretty well, since in the very first preview frame, I was already able to see the outline of the nebula. And then finally, I was able to image Markarian's chain. This one here, I imaged also for an hour and a half. Unfortunately, for the first 20 minutes, I'd forgotten to take off my Batnoff mask. So what I was left with was 23 frames at three minutes apiece. And quite honestly, I didn't realize just how cool of a capture this image was going to be until post-processing. I processed the images of the next day. I ran them through Deep Sky Stacker, uh, where after analyzing all of the images, I removed the ones that had star trailing or that were of low quality. And then I ran them through Cyril, where I removed the green noise caused by the ASI camera, as well as removing any gradients in the background. I used Cyril to remove the stars in order to create a star mask for processing both the comet and the nebula. Afterwards, I brought the images into GIMP for additional processing. Here's a single frame of the comet, and uh, you can see from this image that the comet was uh, starting to dip down towards uh, the horizon. That's the tree line right there. It's on an angle because the uh, lens and the camera were sitting atop the next star mount uh, on top of the Celestron 6SE telescope. So uh, it was tracking towards the horizon. And here you can see an airplane moving across the field of view. So this is what I had to work with. Uh, and I actually found this quite challenging because uh, the, the sky was still quite bright. And there, were some, uh, there was some light pollution coming from a neighboring municipality in this direction. So what I did was uh, I brought this into GIMP uh, with separate layers for uh, just the comet and uh, the star separate from that. And I also created a separate layer for the trees, the tree line over here. And then I basically tried different combinations of stretches in order to build up as much of an image to uh, bring out the tail of the comet while at the same time not oversaturating the image. So here I've got the frames of the comet after processing in Cyril brought into GIMP, uh, some with the stars removed. And then in GIMP, I also removed the tree line. Uh, and then I did various stretches on various layers before recombining them. 
So uh, just stepping through some of the attempts, here's a, a pretty nice one of the comet, uh, but without the stars present. And then uh, some uh, more stretching to bring out the tail of the comet. Uh, and just stepping through some of these, you can see various combinations where I think I've, I've pushed farther than, than I should have uh, in order to, to get that tail of the comet to come out and then putting the uh, tree line back in. And here we've got the Rosette Nebula. So uh, this image of the Rosette Nebula is 27 frames of three minutes apiece. So just about uh, an hour and a half worth of data. And all I did with this is in Cyril, I did some mild stretching and then I removed the stars uh, so that I can bring in a starless and a version that had with stars in order to create a star mask. So here's uh, the star mask with the stars alone, and that allowed me to do some stretching on the nebula that was independent of the stars. Uh, and I did not capture enough calibration frames. You can see here some of the amp glow in the corner, uh, which uh, I'm going to have to crop in in my final image. Now the stars, uh, I just reduced them a little bit using curves, uh, no, uh, no other type of uh, star reduction in order to uh, accent a little bit more the, the nebula itself. I was a little worried that at 135 millimeters, the Rosette Nebula would seem too small, but I like this image. You can, you can see the nebulosity surrounding the Rosette Nebula here, which I think gives it some pretty cool context. And then finally, we've got Markarian's chain. So uh, here's Markarian's chain with the 135 millimeter lens uh, and the ASI camera. Now, here was my image of Markarian's chain from last year. Um, this is before I started taking better calibration frames, so before my UPPD mats. Comparing the two, this is with the Celestron 6 SE at 1000 millimeters compared to uh, the Rokinon lens at 135 millimeters, you can really see that uh, here there's much finer detail, but here I'm capturing a much wider uh, portion of the chain of galaxies. And this is where, where things got really interesting. So I thought this would be all I would see within Markarian's chain. But then as I started to zoom out of the image, uh, what I started to find was that there were so many more galaxies in the vicinity. In fact, everywhere you look in this image, there are more and more galaxies. And at last count, uh, well, I stopped counting at 100. So there is a lot to image and capture here, which is why I think this is one of my most interesting captures to date. I think this image is really cool. And it's given me some ideas for things I'd like to capture in the future. For example, down here, are a pair of uh, what appear to be colliding galaxies. Now these are called the Siamese galaxies. Uh, they are NGC 4567 and 4568. Well as soon as I saw these I decided I wanted to capture them in more detail. The weather called for a couple of clear nights the following week and I set up my telescope both times. Unfortunately each time the clouds rolled in. In the end all I was able to get out of those two nights was an hour and a half worth of data which is not enough for these two small galaxies. Now at this point in the season, uh, the galaxies in the Virgo cluster are starting to sink down behind neighboring homes. That's gonna bring us to the Virgo cluster. And yeah, there's the roof of the house. I'm not gonna be getting these galaxies in tonight. So I'm going to have to wait until next season before I try again. And when I do, there are a number of other targets in this vicinity that I think would be really fantastic to image. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and clear skies.